Hey guys, this is MacKids101. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on something called assembly. So if you've ever wondered what your microprocessor ever runs or what programming language your microprocessor uses, the answer is assembly. And so therefore, if you program in assembly, you'll be programming directly for your processor in a language that your processor really does understand. And that's one of the cool features about assembly that you'll never get in any other programming language. Maybe a bit in C, but not really. Um, so the, the thing is that on the Macintosh computer, there's no software that comes with Xcode or anything, really, that allows you to program directly for your microprocessor. But instead, there is something that comes with Xcode called GCC, which compiles something called GAS. GAS is essentially a assembler language that runs on cross platforms. It's not processor specific, but it's pretty close and it's it's good for understanding how your computer's processor really works. So, before you even start to use assembler, you have to understand at least a bit about the hardware of your computer so that way you understand what assembler is actually doing when you're running instructions. So, just like I just said, the microprocessor in your computer is a chip in your computer that runs assembly code, and assembly code is formed of instructions. So, when you do anything in assembler, you have to use an instruction, and there are only a, a couple dozen instructions at best. So, it's, it's very limited in the functionality. Um... So that's, that's the way the processor in, gets instructed. The next part of your processor is that it, it holds little, little chunks where it can store a bit of data called registers. And I'll go over them again in a couple of minutes just to give you a better idea. Next, you have to understand what RAM is. RAM, also known as memory, are little chips in your computer that can store data. Now, RAM... It, they need electricity running through them to keep track of data and that's why you never want to store any files in RAM I don't know if that's even possible really but RAM is solely for the purpose of running applications to store their their data that they've accumulated while running and then they shouldn't keep keep stuff in RAM after they close so that's what RAM is now RAM also since it has a ton of bytes is addressed and what that means is every byte in RAM has a unique number that identifies it that no other byte in RAM has and that number is 32 bits um, so while on that topic of bits a bit is a one or a zero and a byte is eight ones or zeros so a bit there are two different things it can be and a byte there are 256 different things it can be so every Every byte in RAM is addressed with 32 bits. That's a four-byte thing that gets put together and gets turned into a number. So the problem is that there are only so many numbers that 32 bits can hold, like a, a, a couple, couple billion combinations that, um, you know, 32 bits can hold. And so that's why people started making 64-bit operating systems, which address places in RAM with 64 bits instead of 32 bits. So that way you can have much more RAM. Um, so then you get into the problem with programming on a 64-bit OS on a 32-bit processor. So the processor holds registers that hold 32 bits. And when you're addressing RAM, you're using 64 bits to address them. And normally, when you want to hold an address for a byte in RAM, you want to put it either into another place in RAM, but eventually you'll have to put it in a register somewhere. And so there, there a problem arises, and that is, if you want to put a 64-bit pointer into a 32-bit register, then you're out of luck. And that's why GAS is also great, because it allows you to use 64-bit code because it makes special registers that are 64 bits. So that's that's why we're going to be using GNU assembly instead of processor assembly as well. 
So, at this point, I think you understand enough of the fundamentals to be ready to start programming a basic assembler application. Now, before we even get started programming, once again, I'll have to say that making a Hello World application is harder than in any other language due to the limited functionality of assembler. So that's not even going to be our first application. Our first application is going to be much, much simpler. So this application is going to be just simply something that doesn't do anything. So every assembly application, or GIS assembly, has to declare a main function and have a main function. If you don't understand what functions are, you should learn another programming language before doing before doing assembler, just so that way you understand some of the terminology I am using. Anyway, in our main function, there are a few things you have to do. So first you have to run this instruction. Then you have to move something into something else. By the way, semicolons are not necessary in GNU assembly. So this sets up something called the stack frame. I will explain this in another tutorial, but for now, just put it there. And then at the end of our main function, we have to call leave and ret. So what we're going to do, our code would normally go here. We're going to return a number. So to understand this, you have to understand every command you ever run, every application has a return value. So if I run ls, you, you get a directory listing. Now let's say you want to see what ls return. You do echo space dollar sign question mark and that'll say zero. This really just tells you what's in the EAX register at any given time and so therefore you know if applications put zero in the EAX or return zero then you won't get anything. There's a specific app called false, which puts 1 into EAX. And so there we go. So we're going to use the move instruction to put 0 into EAX. I will also point out you should not put any large numbers into EAX because that will cause problems. Alright, so you'll see right here, up here I do a move Q and here I do a move L. Move Q up here means move 64 bits. Move L means move 32, because, um, for instance, this is a 32-bit register. Now, in 32-bit systems, these two lines of code would actually be correct, but now I realize you have to use special registers that are, in fact, 64-bit for these. So, every 64-bit register in GAS starts with an R in this case. So, that's why move Q is up here and move L is down here. Move L moves 32 bits because EAX is built into the processor so therefore it's 32 bits. So if we want to run this application we have to run the GCC command on it then execute the a.out file. When we run this we can just take a look at what EAX is and it's zero. Let's say we want to change it to be something else to make sure it works. How about three? Then we can run this application. And there we go, we have three. So, this is our first GIS program ever. The equivalent to this in C, just in case you're wondering, would be return three in the main function. So, C is like assembler, it's just more simple and it does stack frames and stuff for you. So this is our first tutorial. I'll post this code on the description of the video. So thanks for watching Mac Kids and Olam. Subscribe and goodbye.